Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Old Testament chronologically in 111 days. We're on day 108. Today we'll be finishing off Zechariah and starting uh, Esther. Uh, actually, I'll be reading all of Esther. So, let's get started here in Zechariah 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And Yahweh my God shall come, all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to Yahweh, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that the living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. And summer and winter shall it be, and Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Yahweh, and his name one. That's a great verse, yeah. One Lord. All the land shall be turned as a plain of Geba to Rimon south of Jerusalem. It shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the front, uh, unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate from the tower of Hananiel, unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and, on the hand of, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, and of the camel, and of the ass, and of all all the beasts that should be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. And it shall be a whoso will not come up of the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, even unto them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the punishment of all nations that shall not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto Yahweh, and the pots in Yahweh's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto Yahweh of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and seed there, and in that day shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of Yahweh of hosts. Yep, great verses here. But um, I like this one here. The Lord shall be king over all the earth. Amen. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. All right, starting Esther, chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Asahurus, this is Asahurus, which reigned from India even to Ethiopia, over 107 and 20 provinces, that in those days when the king Asahurus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, until the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom, the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple and silver rings and pillars of marble, and the beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law, no, none did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should be according to every man's pleasure. 
Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women of the royal house which belonged to King Asahurus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, Amrikha, Zethar, Karkas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Asahurus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But Queen Vashti refers, refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshena, Shethar, Adamatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marsena, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, and which set the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto Queen Vashti according to the law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the king as a hearse by the chamberlains? And Memucan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to the princes, and to all the people that are in all provinces of King Asahurus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, and it shall be reported. The king Asahurus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise all the ladies of Persia Media say to this day unto the the, all the king's princes which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Asahurus, and let the king give her a royal state unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which shall he, he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the same pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memekan. For he sent lesser letters into all the king's provinces, and to every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their own language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that should be published according to the language of every people. Esther 2 After these things, then, the wrath of King Asahurus was appeased. He remembered Vashti, and what she had done, and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan the palace, to the house of women, unto the custody of Heg, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan the palace there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjaminite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and, she, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. And it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and many maidens were gathered together into Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house, the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and speedily gave her her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Asahurus, after that she had been twelve months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months of the oil of myrrh, six months of the sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maid into the king, whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned to the second house of the women, to the custody of Shashgaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came into the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto King Asahurus into his royal house in the tenth month, which is the month of Tibeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. 
Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast, and he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her for Esther to the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hand on the king Asahurus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out, therefore they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Esther 3 After these things did Asahurus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants which were in the king's gate said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? And it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then Haman full of wrath. And he sought to, uh, thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Asahurus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is, the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Asahurus, they cast pur, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And Haman said unto King Asahurus, there is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of that kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws, therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have charged the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Han, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto Han, The silver is given to thee, the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called. On the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded, and to the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of King Asahurus was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. A copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. The posts were not being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan the palace, and the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city Shushan was perplexed. Esther 4 When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice, and bitter cry, and came before the king's gate, for none might enter to the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatach, one of the king's chamberlains, to whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatach went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king, to make supplication to him, and to make request before him for her people. And Hatach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again Esther spake unto Hatach, and gave him a commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. 
And Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather all the Jews for that are in present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go into the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Esther 5 Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held up to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I prepared for him. And the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And when the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy position? And she and it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request, even to the half of the kingdom shall it be performed. Then answered Esther, and said, My petition and my request is, If I have fa found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition, and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do to-morrow as the king hath said. Then went Haman forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman remained himself, framed himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches, the multitude of his children, all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, Moreover, Yea, as to the queen, did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. And tomorrow I am invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh's wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased him on, and he caused the gallows to be made. Esther 6. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, to the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Asahurus. And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was coming to the, to the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman, Haman came in, the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to honor more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head, and let this apparel horse be delivered to the hand of the one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him. Thus it shall be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate, let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. <laughs> oh, burn! Man, just imagine the look on his face when the king said that. Then took him on the apparel and the horse, and raided Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus it shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. 
And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hasted to bring Haman to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Esther 7 So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen, and the king said unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it be, if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not counter countervail the king's damage. Then the king asked her his answer and sent to Esther the queen, Who is he and where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood to make a request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will you force the queen also before me in the house? And the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Esther 8 on that day did King Asahorus give the house of Ahman the Jews' enemy unto Esther for Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. And the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther, so Esther arose and stood before the king, and said, If it please the king, if I have found favor in his sight, and the things seem right before the king, if I be pleasing his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Azahur said unto Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, for the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, that is, the month Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the lieutenants, and to the deputies, and the rulers of the provinces which are from India unto Ethiopia, a hundred and twenty and seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and the Jews according to their writing, and according to their language. And he wrote in the king Asahurst's name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by post on horseback, riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries. Wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Asahurus, namely, upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, a copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the post that rode upon the mules and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given to, at Shushan the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white, and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor, and in every province and in every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Okay, so actually, um, we're going to finish Esther tomorrow, but that's it for today. So yeah, um, you know, Esther is a great uh, story. We'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, but Esther shows um, God's will and God's plan, even though you don't necessarily uh, see him uh, in action. Well, he is working in the background, so it's a great picture of how God 
works in the background, even, even in times when we don't actively see him or feel him or sense him. God is always working in the background. And um, the ending of uh, Esther proves that God is always working in every situation, even when you personally can't feel him or sense him. You just have to keep trusting him. Trust uh, and faith in him. You know, feeling God, feeling God's presence uh, is not part of faith or trust. That's your feelings. That's your personal uh, bodily feelings. Uh, trust and faith go beyond your feelings because feelings are always temporary. Faith and trust in God should be, you know, a, a thing that happens 24-7. Should be. It's easier said than done, I know. But uh, the Bible commands us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. That's Proverbs 3, 5. What a great verse that is. Don't lean on your understanding. Don't try to have understanding in any situation you're going through. Just trust in the Lord with all your heart. So fervent trust, fervent faith, no matter what. So anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, trust in him, wait upon him, hope in him, and you'll never be sorry. And God willingly, we'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So thanks again. Take care and God bless.